What's going on my friends? Today we are going to install the first ever USB GFCI device. So Legrand sent me this new USB GFCI and it's got USB-C and USB-A ports. Um, it also tests and resets just like a regular GFCI, but look, how th look at how fat that is. Like this box is t probably twice the size of a regular GFCI uh, box. I don't even know with wires in the box if you're going to be able to fit that in the box. But we're about to put this right there. First thing that we need to do now that our power is shut off, uh, take the plate off, take the plug out, literally just hook this one up. We're gonna make sure that our line side uh, is on the line side, make sure load side's on the load side. That way the rest of the kitchen over here is protected from this GFI. Put everything back together, turn it on, test it. Should be as easy as that. Oh, hell. Can you see how there's no slack at all? Like I can't pull this out any more than that. So this whole time working next to this, I'm gonna have to sit and like try to screw with these small wires. Don't do this. You, you, yeah, you, you right there and right there. You don't do this. This is such a pain in the ass. It's like three inches long. slide at all. Miss too. Like come on man. Don't why do you cut stuff so far back there? It's just not necessary. And you know, like at some point an electrician knows that either he or she or another electrician is going to have to come back and screw with this. Another thing not to do is don't just like twist the wires together like this. Like these are actually just really loose. You need to put a wire knot on that or a crimp sleeve or something to make sure that these, this ground does not come apart. That's a really important thing. Grounds being solid and not coming apart. Very, 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 very important. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so how do we know, once we've gotten everything taken apart, how do we know which one of these are our home run? It's really important on any GFCI device that you put in that you separate the line from the load. Usually the load has this little sticker that blocks it because not every GFCI device is going to have a line of load. Like sometimes this might be a single wire that's coming from a breaker somewhere. So you only have two wires. Um, then you would just put those two in the line side and just leave the sticker on because you don't have any other wires or other receptacles down the line that also need to be protected. It kind of stops here. Um, another thing that you can do is if like one receptacle needs to be GFCI protected, but everything down the line does not need to be, you don't have to put all of the load, the load side wires that go to the next device on the load side. You can actually put them both on the line side. I call that line siding the device. A lot of electricians do, um, but that means that your incoming hots would go on your line side and the next ones going out to the next plugs would be on the line side. So they all stay hot, but this one device itself is the only one that has GFCI protection. I noticed there's a plate under this thing. So I don't need a hook there. I just need um, to stab a wire in. So I actually need to straighten this guy out. Um, both, actually all of these are plates. So they're all, none of them actually need to have hooks. So I can unbend all these hooks once I sit and figure out where the line and load is. Um, but let's figure out the line and load. So what you're gonna do on your multimeter is make sure that you go to your continuity setting. Um, this is gonna give you an actual tone. It lets you know from here, there's a, there's a signal that's being sent out one lead and it's coming all the way back into here and it's letting you know like, hey, there's a complete loop. 
So uh, first and foremost, we need to identify in there like which one of our pairs. You can see there's one piece of Romex on this side. There's a white and a black coming out of the sheathing. There's another piece of Romex on this side with a white and a black coming out of it. So one of them is going to tone out from neutral to ground. And the reason that is, is because way back at the electrical panel in the service, our neutrals and our hots are bonded together. Only in that place. All the rest of the circuitry everywhere else is not. So we can tell which neutral is our home run neutral. All right, got me a green wire nut. It's got the hole in it. Um, these are actually listed to be used for ground terminations and you're allowed to use them. A lot of people are like, why would you use a wire nut that can stab through it? Well, you're not using it on like regular joints. Um, you're using it on, you know, with the explicit purpose of allowing that conductor to go through the wire. Nut. Nothing wrong with it. Give it another little quarter turn. What I would have done on these, if I was the one wiring this place, is I would have made sure that that joint was like out here. So I had plenty of wire and then I would have twisted it together here and left the wire even longer. Um, all of these too, I would have left like probably another six inches on every single one of those wires. That way you can accordion everything in, push it back. If you need to pull it out and work on it, like it's, it's way out here. I'm sitting here like bent over this countertop and I barely have any room and I'm sitting next to this thing. It just sucks to work on this. I know I'm just complaining. I'll stop. I'm sorry. All right, so now we got to put the device on. Um, we've got our ground, we've got our home runs, which are going to be our line side. Uh, the other two are going to be our load side that feed to the rest of these receptacles. So I'm going to take this sticker off. This thing even says, like it says hot line, hot load. That means your hot wires, your black wires, they're your hot line and your hot load. And then you've got your white line and your white load, white load, white line. Also on the back, it usually says load and line. So it lets you know hot and white or you know black and white for the line, uh, hot and white for the load, obviously ground. But just so you know, GFIs, they have to have some sort of line and load. Now how a GFCI device works, um, on the inside of this, there's actually a current transformer. So basically the uh, hot and the neutral go through a donut essentially and that current sensor is able to monitor whether or not there's a drop in the difference between this uh, neutral and this ground because the majority of the time you have any load plugged into a, a device the current is always going back and forth from hot to neutral just boom, 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 60 times a second there should always be an even amount on these circuits so it senses whether or not there's a drop in one of these conductors so it's a push and a pull at all times. And if all of a sudden the push or the pull drops more than the other wire, you know, so like all of a sudden you have like, I don't know, 14 amps on this wire and 15 amps on that one, it shouldn't be. And very, very quickly, like boom, just trips this device and cuts the power off. Okay, so let's install it. Uh, I'm gonna put my ground on first. It's just what I do. Plus it's the one that I have the longest length on. So it'll help me to be able to get that out of the way first. All right, so we've got our hot line, hot load. Oh, this is gonna suck. Let's start with our white load. Basically what I'm trying to do right now is hook every single one of the wires up that is not a hot uh, conductor. Now, these wires aren't hot. The only reason I do that is it's just a habit that I get into. So if I ever am working on something hot, I just have the same methodology. I try to get everything that is hooked up that's not hot first and leave the hot stuff till the very last. Plus it helps you just keep track of your wires so you're not like accidentally hooking the wrong one up. Okay, now... The hats. All right, so now 
that that is all hooked up, what we're gonna do is push this guy back in. It's a good thing I didn't add any extra wire onto those because that's already hard as hell to push in. All right, now that we have the power turned back on, we need to test the device, make sure that we installed it correctly. Uh, let me shut the light off. We got two lights, which is good to go. If you look on here, two lights on the right, it says correct. That's what we had. One more time. Boom. Now what we're gonna do is put this screwless plate on. A lot of people are changing to these whole screwless plate things. They're a lot more decorative and pretty and fancy. Let's see. Ooh, I like this one. I actually like this one a lot because um, there's a lot less material. Like a lot of these have this huge back plate that you have to put on. And it's just like huge and bulky. Some brands make like metal ones that you have to pull the device out and put the metal plate behind it and then screw the plug back, back into it. So I just like that this thing is like super easy. You just literally put it over and screw it on. Um, is there of this side up? No, there's not. Both of the flanges are the same. It says this side out right here. So I'm just gonna put that on there. So I want it flush against the wall, but I don't want it sucking in and I don't want it to be still loose. I want it to be tight on there. This one you can tell is still really loose. So I need to push a little bit more. Look at all that nasty crap. Sorry guys, I have a old house. I'm not some fancy, you know, rich guy. Maybe, maybe if you all start buying my courses, oh, you should go to my courses and buy my courses. Go to www.electricianu.com forward slash practice hyphen exams. So do that right now. Like pause this whole thing. Stop. You're not learning anything anyways. Like really I'm talking, we're talking about plates here. For, I mean, for real, go buy my stuff. Did you go buy it? Okay. Now back to this. So this screw right here is actually not in all the way. I'm going to kind of over dramatize it. But the bottom of this is not sitting up flush, and it's because the screw was out too much. So if that happens, if you can't get any closer, they leave this hole in there just for you to make adjustments, and you can screw it a little bit tighter. It kind of sucks everything up a little bit better. And bada boom, daddy. Um, this also says up. Most of these plates do. So make sure that this side's up. It looks like it's completely symmetrical. I don't really get why there has to be an up or down, but they do it anyways. So you're gonna go up and kind of slide down so that that catches on the back side there. Then you hear that little pop and boom. Doesn't that look fancy? Isn't that neat? Best can to use it and video.